7 News on your side at 11 starts now. We begin with a breaking news alert. That breaking news that we're following tonight at 11 o'clock, strong winds fueling a brush fire in D.C. In fact, you're looking at video taken just after that fire broke out on Blue Plains Drive in Southwest. D.C. firefighters forced to call in neighboring fire companies in order to help. And within just the past 10 minutes, D.C. firefighters told us they have put out the last bit of flames out there. Crews are now clearing the scene. D.C. Fire tells 7 News that they're working with Pepco because there are several power lines that may now be impacted from this fire and they're working to figure out if it was a down power line that sparked this fire. No buildings are in that immediate area. Well, the first alert weather team has been on wind alert all day. We just got this new image of a down tree in Alexandria, just one of several that we've seen in our area. This is on King Street, just north of I-395. Tonight, the road is closed between Park Center and Northampton Drive. So the wind could also cause some more problems for the morning commute. 7 News Chief Meteorologist Veronica Johnson. She's timing this out for us in the First Alert Weather Center. Hey, VJ. Hey there. Yeah, the winds are slowly coming down. Good evening, everyone. But still in the morning, look at this. Our wind's still over 30 miles per hour. It could be between 35 and 40 mile per hour gusts for your morning rush. By noon, we'll see them drop to 30 mile per hour gusts. And then afternoon, down to 25 mile per hour gusts. So at least in the early part of your day tomorrow, it's still going to be quite windy. We still could see some limbs down some debris blowing around that wind alert up again until noon tomorrow. So keep that in mind as you plan out your day. The other thing is with the cold air and these strong winds out of the northwest, folks, it's going to be cold. I just look back at some of the numbers and tomorrow morning could be our coldest morning since mid February. Look at the wind chill temperature. You're 18 in DC, 19 in Warrington, 16 degrees in Winchester, Virginia for early tomorrow morning at 32 degrees. It's going to be cold. I want you to have the gloves ready, the warm coat again, 43 at recess time for the kids and then 52 getting off the bus. At least it will feel better during the afternoon and a day with sunshine. Meanwhile, for your day on Thursday, I've got a beautiful day. I'm going to show you that coming up in a few minutes. New tonight, the FAA is investigating a close call between two commercial airlines at Reagan National Airport. Now, this is at least the seventh near miss to happen recently at a U.S. airport. 7 News Tom Rousey live at Reagan tonight. Tom, how did this one happen? Well, Jonathan, we're just learning about it today, but it actually happened last week. You had a plane that was cleared by air traffic control to cross one runway, but instead it crossed a different runway. And in fact, the runway it crossed, if you're here in the terminal, you see the map. It's the one that you can see almost running perpendicular to the terminal. In fact, you could see it out the window right now if it wasn't nighttime. As you'll hear, there were some very scary moments on that runway one week ago today. Last week around 8.30 Tuesday morning, a United Airlines flight to Chicago was being cleared for takeoff by air traffic control. Listen to how frantic things suddenly became. United 2003 or maybe one clear for takeoff traffic. Clear for takeoff rolling United 2003. Oh, United 2003. Scan the takeoff clear. Boarding takeoff. Boarding takeoff United 2003. According to the FAA, an American Airlines flight to Raleigh operated by Republic Airways had been cleared to cross runway four at the airport, but instead crossed runway one, putting it directly in the path of the United flights takeoff. The FAA says it's investigating just how close the planes came to each other. This is one of a number of recent incidents nationwide in which planes came dangerously close to a collision on runways. And at the gate last week in Boston, one United plane being towed with passengers hit another. What the heck is going on in air travel? Last Wednesday on Capitol Hill, acting FAA Administrator Billy Nolan talked about a safety summit he called for this Wednesday with industry leaders. He called it in response to all the recent near misses. We will sit and talk about what are you seeing, and then we'll give them an opportunity to go back to their operation, then come back to us with some concrete examples. All right, so what is the problem? Why does this keep happening? Well, one pilots association told us last week they believe it could be a situation where pilots are under a lot of stress because of a shortage of pilots. They're also fearful that new pilots maybe are not getting the training in the air that they should be getting. Now, that being said, some of the incidents that have happened recently seem to have been the fault of air traffic control. However, this incident at Reagan last week seems to have been the fault of a pilot, but the FAA does caution they are still in investigating reporting live at Reagan National Airport Tom Rousey 7 News scary nonetheless Tom thank you for that and right now police are looking for the gunman who shot a man and a woman in Suitland Maryland 
Now, we first brought you this story as breaking news tonight at 6 o'clock. That shooting happened in an apartment building on Brooks Drive right near Suitland High School. In fact, the man that was shot ran to the school after he had been wounded and a staff members called 911. Now, the woman, we're told, is listed in critical condition. Neither of the victims appear to be connected to the school in any way. The motive for the shooting still unclear. No arrests have been made. And that shooting came on the same day that President Biden signed an executive order to expand background checks for buying guns. The president signed the order in Monterey Park, California. That's where a gunman stormed a dance hall and shot 20 people, killing 11 during Lunar New Year celebrations. Now, the president's action does not change any laws, but it does direct federal agencies to ensure compliance with existing laws and procedures. I continue to call on Congress to require background checks for all firearm sales. And in the meantime, in the meantime, my executive order directs my attorney general to take every lawful action possible, possible to move us as close as we can to universal background checks without new legislation. Now, current federal law requires background checks to be run on all gun purchases from federally licensed dealers. Tonight, Loudoun County parents are making their voices heard as the district searches for a new permanent superintendent. The former superintendent was fired late last year after facing backlash for how the district handled two student sexual assault cases. It's a story that 7 News has followed closely as part of our crisis in the classroom coverage. Our Christian Flores attended tonight's input session to learn what parents want to see in their next school leader. Tonight was the first of three feedback meetings. This one over here at Dominion High School. Parents here all seem to be on the same page. They want to see the end of the divisiveness the school district has seen in recent years. I'd say the last few years have been challenging. After former Loudoun County Public School Superintendent Dr. Scott Ziegler was fired in December, parents say they're ready for a fresh start. The assaults, the, the, the two young ladies, I, I thought the, the, the whole thing was just despicable. Over the last few years, I think, I think there's a lot of angst, anger. I think there's a lot of skepticism, cynicism. A lot of us wanted to communicate the importance that trust had been shattered across the community and that we are really seeking someone who can help rebuild that trust. Parents are looking for a superintendent who represents all students, regardless of the political climate surrounding schools right now. Someone who uh, had really good listening skills, who was open to hearing all voices, who was politically astute in that they were savvy enough to deal with diverse points of view. I want to be sure that a small segment doesn't take over the direction that our school district is going for um, towards um, taking books off shelves. Right now, the district is in the process of getting feedback before taking applications and identifying candidates. They have hired a search firm to help. How much will, will parents lives uh, on Dr. Ziegler inform what qualifications you're looking for for this next superintendent? I think it's really important that uh, we're looking forward, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's this isn't a conversation about what things have been done wrong in the past, but really, OK, where are we now and, and where do we want to be and who's going to be able to get us there? The district is aiming to fill the position by July 1st ahead of next school year. This really is about education of our children and making the schools safe, welcoming places. There's another feedback meeting tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the District Administration Building in Ashburn. Another one on Thursday at 615 at Heritage High School in Sterling. Christian Flores, 7 News. Top prosecutors from across Maryland are pushing for two bills that would better protect children from abuse and sex trafficking. The first is called the Safe Harbor Bill. It protects juvenile victims of human trafficking from being prosecuted for crimes that they commit while they're being exploited. We know that victims are not given a choice. They are forced, threatened to participate in some unimaginable acts. Now, the second bill would allow prosecution of certain adults outside of schools like music teachers and coaches if they engage in relations with 16 or 17 year olds. Critics of the bill say kids could take advantage of the laws to either commit crimes or hurt people in positions of authority. Well, tomorrow, Prince William County Police are going to be giving away more steering wheel locks. This has become a very popular program. This is all in response to the recent trend in which thieves have been targeting certain Kia and Hyundai cars. 
Now, Hyundai drivers can pick up free steering wheel locks tomorrow from 8 o'clock in the morning until noon at all police stations in Prince William County. And the police chief tells 7 News that during their last giveaway, these steering wheel locks were so popular that they were gone within the first hour. Hmm. Well, tonight we're learning more about the Russian plane that crashed into an American drone. The Pentagon revealed what else Russian pilots did. And weeks after a deadly Silver Spring apartment fire, Montgomery County's fire chief says three things that could have saved a life just did not happen. You're watching 7 News on your side at 11. Well, tonight the manhunt continues for Roy McGrath. He's the former chief of staff to ex-Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. U.S. Marshals just released a new wanted poster for McGrath. A judge issued an arrest warrant yesterday after he didn't show up for his criminal trial in Baltimore. McGrath is accused of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from the state while serving as director of Maryland Environmental Service. And the Pentagon now is shedding some more light about a U.S. surveillance drone that collided with a Russian jet over the Black Sea. Now, U.S. military officials say that the encounter lasted more than 30 minutes. This wasn't just a few seconds. This was going on for a while. One Russian jet dumped fuel on the drone. Then a second jet flew in front of it and wound up clipping the drone's propeller. U.S. defense officials call the incident an unsafe and unprofessional intercept. You're flying alongside it to, uh, to be able to see what's there. Um, in this particular case, though, again, uh, they collided with the aircraft, damaging the propeller uh, and essentially uh, putting in a situation where it was unflyable and uncontrollable, so we brought it down. Now, the Pentagon says the drone was flying lawfully over international waters. Moscow claims the drone crashed on its own and that their planes didn't hit it. It's unclear if the drone was armed, and the Pentagon's not going to say what technology was on board. It's been nearly one month since a woman was killed in an apartment building fire in Silver Spring. Today, Montgomery County's fire chief revealed three things that could have saved her life. The chief told council members the people who lived in the apartment that caught fire tried putting it out themselves and did not call 911. They also didn't close their apartment doors, which would have helped contain the fire. The balcony door to apartment 720 was left open. They propped the door to apartment 720 open. Thus, the deadly products of smoke and gases are now spreading un unchecked into the hallway. The chief also noted the building lacking automatic sprinklers in each apartment, an issue 7 News has followed since the fire. This was one of five deadly fires in Montgomery County since the start of the year. Well, President Biden says he will deliver the eulogy at former President Jimmy Carter's funeral when that happens. The 39th president requested it. Carter announced last month that he's receiving end-of-life care at his Georgia home. President Biden has known him since 1976 when he supported Carter's presidential campaign. At 98 years old, Carter now is the oldest U.S. president. Right now, the Justice Department and the SEC are investigating the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. At this point, it is too early to know if those investigations uncovered evidence of wrongdoing, but the bank's failure will factor into the Federal Reserve's next decision on interest rates. The Fed now has to really rethink how much more aggressive do they want to get with interest rates? I mean, they don't, if they stop raising interest rates now, uh, does that mean inflation will start to pick up? We're expecting a final decision from the Federal Reserve on interest rates next Wednesday. Well, the federal government's going to spend $2.5 billion to add more electric vehicle charging stations throughout the country. Now, the grants will help strategically place chargers in underserved locations and connecting highways. Now, the Transportation Department says that they want to make sure having an electric vehicle is convenient, affordable, and accessible. Oh, well, we have some exciting news about the cherry blossoms. The National Park Service says peak bloom could come earlier than expected. The Park Service predicted peak bloom will happen March 22nd through the 25th. But now they say peak bloom could actually start on the early side of that timeline. And look at these beautiful cherry blossom protector badges. Fourth graders in Arlington made these designs. The National Park Service will give out three of these buttons in the Tidal Basin welcome area during the National Cherry Blossom Festival. And by the way, the festival runs March 20th to April 16th, and 7 News is a proud sponsor. Well, it's a sea of white in Massachusetts. We got some fresh video into our newsroom, and you can see the crews there working hard to get the power back on after heavy, wet snow pounded New England. 
and it may look pretty, but conditions are dangerous. In New Hampshire, a tree fell on a girl who was playing outside. It took 16 firefighters and three police officers to free her. She's in the hospital, but thankfully she wasn't hurt badly. All right, well, let's take a look at where the storm system is right now. Heavy wet snow continues to come down. We're getting the impacts from that nor'easter are being felt here. Heaviest snow, Boston areas of eastern Long Island and around uh, Nantucket. And you go way over here, and all we have is a few uh, lingering snow showers on the west side of the mountains, a few scattered clouds, but still those high winds. They'll continue through the morning hours, gusts 35, close to 40 miles per hour in the morning, and then easing through the afternoon hours, sunshine at least 50 to your high temperature around 4, 5 o'clock. But it's going to feel again much colder throughout the day from teens in the morning to low 40s during the afternoon. I'm going to have a look at the zone cast to show you the morning wind chills in your area coming up. But look at how the temperatures climb to tomorrow 30s really for much of the day what it will feel like in the afternoon and then so much better on Thursday the way it's looking right now we're close to 60 degrees and your next weather maker here bringing rain to the area late Friday have plans to go out St. Patrick's Day celebrating that rain continues until first thing Saturday then the rain moves out maybe a few wet snowflakes first thing Saturday morning so it's a wind alert through noon you've got Thursday best day easily out of the week 64 degrees sunshine beautiful conditions and maybe maybe over 65 degrees some areas down around Stafford and Fredericksburg down through Quantico even Baltimore friends up there at 62 degrees for a temperature during the afternoon and then Friday again you've got that rain moving in hourly look 40s in the morning 60s for the afternoon but even the evening is going to be fairly mild I've got that zone cast coming up in just a moment Scott VJ, thank you. The Howard University men's basketball team is about to do something they haven't done in over 30 years. Plus, hoops night in the district. Find out if the Wizards were able to pick up a much-needed win over those Pistons. Sports is next. Stay with us. And now, the Toyota Sports Desk, sponsored by your Toyota dealers. The NBA regular season is one big roller coaster. Right now, the Wizards are on a speedy downhill. In simpler terms, they're not playing well, losing three straight in five of their last six games. Washington trying to get back on the winning track against the Pistons. Fourth quarter, Bradley Beal's drive is cut off. Settles for the fadeaway, hooping the foul. Now, Beal is just too good to give him this much space. The open three, no doubt about it. 36 for Brad. And the Wiz snapped their losing streak, 117 to 97, the final. On the ice, the Caps visiting the Rangers and losing 1-0 in the first. Nicholas Obey Kubel changes that. The wrister finds the back of the net, and we are tied at one. Second period, Rangers with some crisp passing here. Tick, tack, and a toe. Jacob Truba beating Darcy Kemper for the goal. The Caps follow the Rangers 5-3. And hey, for the first time since 1992, the Howard University men's basketball team is on their way to the NCAA tournament. Today on campus, the team had a special send-off before leaving for Des Moines, Iowa. Students, faculty, and fans lining the sidewalks to show their support. These Howard players are looking forward to playing in the big dance. I mean, they lace their shoes up just like we do. Uh, we put in the work, and I feel like we work as hard as anybody in the country. So we're not going in there scared. We got a team full of dogs, and we're going to put on a show. Got a team full of dogs. Love that. So Howard has arrived in Iowa. They will practice tomorrow. And then on Thursday, their first-round matchup against the defending national champs, Kansas. That game on Thursday will tip off at 2 p.m. Now, your first alert weather zonecast. Well, there's no doubt about it. Our morning commute is going to be cold. Look at the southern zones waiting for the bus. Dahlgren, my friends in La Plata and around Waldorf, you're 19, 20 degrees. The range for the southern zones, Prince William County over to Charles, that's 18 to 20 degrees, what it's going to feel like in the morning. So heat on in the car. Look at the southwestern zones, Culpeper at 17, just 15 degrees in Washington, 15 to 20 degrees for wind chill temperatures in the morning. And that is because those winds are, again, still going to be kicking at about 35, 40 miles per hour in the morning. And 19 degrees even in D.C., 16 Gaithersburg. So you're in that range with clear skies starting out 16 to 19 degrees. Sun's up just after 7 o'clock. And same thing here in the northwestern zones. You're 14, 15 degrees in Winchester. Again, that wind alert through tomorrow.
as cold as it's going to be tomorrow morning. Just think about the warmer times that are coming our way. You got Thursday at 64 degrees, a day that's going to feel like, well, finally spring is here, which it will be on Monday. And then the cloud cover for Friday, the rain comes in late. Jonathan. All right, Veronica, thanks very much. Sports fans are watching this one. Sneakers worn by Michael Jordan are going up for auction. Yeah, and the sale could break a record set by another pair of his kicks. And when a little dog goes a little too far in the ocean, lifeguards come to the rescue, and all of it was caught on camera. Lifeguards in California just made the rescue of a lifetime. That little white dog you see, that is Tofu. And on Saturday, Tofu ran loose in a Long Beach parking lot and then ran into the waves. And he swam far, getting about 150 yards offshore. Lifeguards went after him and loaded him onto a paddleboard. Tofu is now uh, back with his owner and doing just fine. Only in California did they rescue a dog named Tofu, really? <laughs> right. He's lucky the sharks don't He's like lucky. Tofu. <laughs> uh, one of the most famous pairs of shoes in the world could sell for $4 million at auction next month. Michael Jordan, he wore these sneakers right here during game two of the 1998 NBA Finals. That was Jordan's last last season with the Chicago Bulls, which is known by many as the last dance. Jordan already holds the record for most expensive shoes ever sold at auction. A pair he wore early in his career sold for just under $1.5 million in 2021. And wow. I understand they can talk, those shoes. They might as well walk for you as well <laughs> at that price, yeah. Well, the strong wind is sticking around for the morning commute. Veronica has one more look at the forecast when we come back. Thinking about what you're going to wear tomorrow? Well, a warm sweater. That turtleneck sure would be nice because it's going to be very cold. Wind chills in the teens to around 20 degrees in the morning. Afternoon will be better at 52. And have the sunglasses ready, too, for the next couple of days. Good enough. Veronica, thanks very much. And thank you for joining us. Jimmy Kimmel's coming up next. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.